Hello. Thank you very much for attending the with nature and with people, for nature and people, a milestone for a resilient recovery. We are here uh, in this session of the Green Week uh, with a panel of very distinguished uh, speakers and panelists. Uh, we will um, have the session co-chaired by uh, Stefan Leiner, the head of the Biodiversity Unit at the DG Environment in the European Commission, and also by uh, Xavier Leroux, the chair uh, of the Biodiversa uh, Partnership. Uh, we will also have as panelists uh, our main, our keynote speaker, Hilde Egerman, who will explain to us the Biodiversity Partnership and how it is going to contribute to the EU Biodiversity Strategy by merging the both universes of science and environment. And uh, um, the two other panelists, uh, Thomas Brooks from IUCN and uh, Rainer Sotke, uh, from DLR. And uh, I will co moderate this session with my uh, colleague uh, Karin. Hello, Karin from DG Environment. Can you say hello? Yes, hello. Hi. This is supposed to be a very participative session, so please use the chat to ask your questions to the panelists, also to intervene in the debate. Sometimes we will ask you questions uh, on the future research agenda for this uh, partnership, and we are we are eager to to see to read your uh, your um, proposals and your and your contributions. Uh, Everything will be recorded and the chat will be uh, saved too. Uh, with anything else to say, I will give the floor to our co-chair who will give us the welcome address. Welcome, Stefan Leiner. Thank you very much, Josefina, and hello to everybody. It's really a great pleasure for me uh, to welcome you to this session on working with nature and with people for nature and people, a milestone for a resilient recovery. Now, the aim of this session is to discuss ongoing efforts and initiatives to follow up uh, of the EU biodiversity strategy for 2030, such as, for example, the planned European partnership rescuing biodiversity to safeguard life on Earth, and how to increase the deployment of nature-based solutions and urban blue and green infrastructure in the context of the future strategic research and innovation agenda on biodiversity uh, that we will also discuss uh, at this session. Now, let me first, maybe as a matter of introduction, remind a few key elements of the new EU Biodiversity Strategy 2030 that the Commission proposed in May this year. Um, and I want just to stress that science, research and innovation really are at the core of the strategy. Uh, in fact, the strategy is a direct response from the EU to the landmark global assessment of uh, 2019 from the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, which uh, not only depicted the bleak picture of the state of our nature uh, in the Europe, but also globally, but also demonstrated what are the key threats or the, the direct and indirect uh, causes of this biodiversity decline. But it also showed the way forward in the transformative agenda to protecting and, and, and uh, restoring nature. And we really picked up from that report the key elements and translated them also learning from what has worked in the EU in the past uh, building upon the past biodiversity strategies, but including now a much more, I would say, transformative, coherent policy that addresses all these key uh, causes of biodiversity loss. Um, it also responds to the call for urgent action, because the science is also very clear that the next 10 years will be essential to turn the tide not only on climate change, but also on the interdependent biodiversity and ecosystem crisis that we have. And uh, some people ask, why do you come up with this strategy now in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic? 
And in fact, here again, uh, science has showed to us that there is a link between the destruction of nature and the emergence of zoonotic diseases. And if we want to have a resilient economic and social web that we can uh, fight these kind of future pandemics, and there will be more, unfortunately, we need to have healthy ecosystems. So really the objective of the strategy is to put Europe's biodiversity on a path to recovery by 2030 for the benefits of people, the planet, climate and the economy. And the strategy sets out ways to not only better implement existing legislation, but also it has new commitments, some measurable targets uh, for um, uh, and, and also new governance mechanisms building on four main pillars of the strategy. The first is to protect more of our land and sea. 30% uh, of the land should be protected, of which a third strictly protected. It has at the core of the strategy a restoration, uh, EU restoration plan aimed at restoring nature and also addressing a number of areas, for example, forestry, agriculture, pollution, uh, urban dimension, freshwater habitats, uh, with some very concrete objectives in restoring that. The third pillar is to enable the transformative change. And in there, there is a whole section on the importance of knowledge, science and research. And uh, the fourth pillar is to demonstrate our readiness to lead and to take our responsibilities towards a new global biodiversity framework that is currently being negotiated under the Convention on Biological Diversity. So the strategy really aims at rebuilding our relationship with nature, transform our food systems, because the way how we currently produce and consume our food contributes to biodiversity loss and climate change uh, alike. So we need to join the climate action and the ecosystem conservation and restoration action because healthy ecosystems are our major ally to stabilize climate while also deliver crucial services to um, people, including our health. And I think those of us who have been locked down, and I really hope we will not be locked down again, but it's very likely, at least in Brussels, uh, have seen how important it is for our physical and human health uh, to and mental health to really be able to enjoy beautiful nature according uh, around us. So we need to tap into this potential and hence the strategy also promotes what we call nature-based solutions, so investing in uh, areas that are really building upon the great benefits nature provides also in our climate change mitigation and adaptation solutions. The biodiversity partnership uh, that we will discuss today will make the bridge between science policy and practice and therefore it is a key element for the success not only of the biodiversity strategy but also for the European Green Deal as a whole and you know that the biodiversity strategy is a central element of the European Green Deal of the von der Leyen Commission. Therefore the European Commission strongly supports this partnership and we are glad that uh, it is ready to now go with the first wave of partnerships under Horizon Europe and uh, with this I uh, thank you again all for participating. I very much look forward to this inspiring exchange uh, at this Green Week session. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. I would like uh, to uh, encourage uh, the audience to uh, ask the questions in the in the chat. We have also uh, Nerea, our colleague, uh, also from Digital Research and Innovation, who is moderating the chat. So feel free to to put your questions to uh, to all panelists. And I give uh, the floor now to uh, Hilde Egermont who is the vice chair of Biodiversa, the current era net for uh, research on biodiversity. And he she will present us uh, the new, uh, the, 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 the current uh, idea for the new biodiversity partnership. 
Um, thank you, Josefina. Um, and so uh, many thanks also for the opportunity to present uh, the future European co-funded partnership on um, biodiversity. Um, this partnership is in fact a, a co-creation between Biodiversa and the European Commission, DG Research and DG Environment. Um, but it has renewed ambitions and also a comprehensive portfolio of activities and extended membership compared to the current Biodiversa. So more specifically, um, this partnership will provide an overarching platform to connect on the one hand ministries of research, funding organizations and foundations with ministries of environment and environmental protection agencies. And so the partnership will aggregate in cash and in kind resources from the member states with co-financing from the European Commission um, to support the implementation of the EU biodiversity strategy and also to reinforce research and innovation and to connect it with policy. And so it's a co-funded um, partnership. Um, it is open to all countries of the era. Um, we expect some 30 countries to join, uh, represented by 50 members, something that's, that's what we aim for. And if all goes well, it would start in 2022 until 2028, so for a seven year period, for a tentative budget of uh, 435 million euros, of which 300 million euros would go to research funding. We aim for six, six joint calls. And 110 million euros would go to biodiversity monitoring activities and 25 million euros to other activities. Um, now, we recognize that there are a lot of existing initiatives already um, with extensive expertise, with a clear mandate in the different aspects that we would cover. And so the idea would be that we closely collaborate with these key initiatives, with these key stakeholders um, to create the leverage to provide science-based policy support. So no duplication, but rather contributing to the defragmentation of the landscape and most importantly also to the silo between different types of ministries. As said by Stefan, uh, the partnership is part of the EU biodiversity strategy. It refers, um, the strategy refers to this partnership as a tool to make the bridge between science, policy and practice, and indeed to make nature-based solutions a reality on the ground. Um, and also this partnership aims for synergies with Horizon Europe, um, including its missions, but also collaboration with other partnerships like uh, Waterfall All, um, Urban Transitions, Blue Economy and others. Um, now, here you can see an overview of what the partnership aims at. Uh, the 2050 vision of living in harmony with nature strongly aligns with the CBD, the Convention of Biodiversity. And the same is true for the 2030 to 2050 goals of halting biodiversity loss and putting nature back on a path of recovery. But then very specifically for the European partnership, we have identified five overarching objectives. Um, the first one is um, to put in place a consistent network of harmonized uh, monitoring schemes linked to research and innovation and linked to policy. The second objective is to produce actionable knowledge and major scientific breakthroughs on status and trends, dynamics and also options to reduce the threats um, of biodiversity loss. The third objective is to support the evidence for developing, deploying and assessing uh, nature-based solutions. The fourth objective would be to make the business case for biodiversity and hence also contributing to science-based methods to assess the dependency, but also the impact of different sectors on biodiversity. And the last objective um, is science-based policy support, and that would be um, strengthening the implementation of existing policies, but also supporting development of new policies and also um, informing and tracking progress to the EU biodiversity strategy and international targets. Now to do this, um, the partnership will focus on six working areas that are closely aligned with these um, overarching objectives. We have two transversal um, working areas. One is focusing on stakeholder engagement and the other one is focusing on communication outreach and capacity building. And one of the working areas is also specifically focusing on internationalization to make the link with existing science policy interfacing platforms like the IPES, um, links with conventions such as the Convention of Biodiversity, also to focus on biodiversity issues of the overseas and more generally um, on the impact of the EU on biodiversity uh, beyond its borders. Now, to achieve these objectives, um, we foresee a wide range of activities 
um, that could include funding of um, calls for research, implementation of mobility schemes, uh, promotion of data reuse, um, connecting to research infrastructure, citizen science activities, capacity building activities, international cooperation, etc. Now, the approach um, of the proposed partnership will be to um, launch a number of what we call um, flagship programs um, over the course of the seven years. Typically, um, we aim for one or two flagship programs per year. And each flagship program would address a specific biodiversity issue and also gathering a specific portfolio of activities that are relevant to that issue. And this could include a joint call, but it's not a requirement. Um, the flagship programs, they could run over several years. Um, we foresee three to six years for these uh, flagship programs and they should lead to tangible impacts. And with impacts, we mean uh, both scientific breakthroughs, but also um, relevance to society and policy. For sure, over the next few weeks, months, uh, we will collect ideas for these flagship programs, um, keeping in mind that we will seek a balance between both ambition and um, feasibility. Now, of course, all of this is part of the strategic research and innovation agenda uh, for this partnership that is currently being developed um, based on the existing strategic research and innovation agenda of Badversa, um, but also based on new developments in the field, um, new literature, new horizon scanning activities, um, also knowledge gaps identified in DPS assessments, and of course, also the new policy context with the EU Biodiversity Strategy 2030, but also um, the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. Now, what I will present to you now is just a very first outline, a very first brainstorm um, on what the SRIA um, could be. Um, and so I would like to stress that this scheme has not been discussed with potential partners of the partnership. So please consider it a first attempt to advance the thinking without, uh, without preempting uh, forthcoming discussions on this matter. <clears throat> Now, using the first, uh, the existing outline of the Biodiversa SRIA, um, we have identified um, three non-mutually exclusive thematic themes that are here indicated in blue. Um, and that could be suitable for the design of uh, and the implementation of joint calls, um, but also for program alignment, mobility schemes, networking and other joint activities. And these thematic teams, as you see, they closely align with the core teams of the EU biodiversity strategy, but also with the theory of change of the post 2020 global biodiversity framework. We have selected these um, thematic themes also because we think that they are groundbreaking for science and also that they are action oriented with high societal and policy impacts. And of course, also that we see complementarity and also um, synergy with priorities of the Horizon Europe um, work program, including um, also its missions. Now, these three thematic areas, they are complemented with two cross-cutting themes uh, that you see here indicated in green. Um, and these are relevant to all the thematic themes. And these, uh, all the teams, the five teams are then supported by what we call enabling approaches, which include stakeholder engagement, but also communication and outreach, um, again, to maximize the impact for um, society and for policy. Now, the first thematic theme uh, focuses on actionable knowledge for nature um, protection and nature restoration. And so um, there is a lot, there's of course a lot that could be tackled under this umbrella um, in terms of science based knowledge needs. We have identified, uh, pre identified two sub themes, one that is focusing on uh, biodiversity conservation across land and sea. And so this sub team could, for example, focus on research to support the identification of additional protected areas, um, role and effectiveness of protected areas and other effective area based conservation measures, how to develop resilient ecological networks, etc. And the second sub team uh, that we have pre identified is focusing on um, ecosystem restoration across land and sea. And so that could include research and knowledge needs to support the transition to more sustainable practices in agriculture, in forestry, um, in soil management, in uh, marine and freshwater ecosystems. Um, and it could also focus, for example, on exploring new paths, new tools for conservation. 
The second theme is about actionable knowledge um, for transformative change. Of course, uh, the rationale for this is that different reports, including the IPES Global Assessment, but also the fifth Global Biodiversity Outlook report, um, they point to the need of transformative change um, to halt biodiversity loss. Again, we have identified pre two uh, sub-themes. One that is focusing on uh, making the business case for biodiversity action, um, and that could include, for example, the development of tools to assess the impact, but also the dependency of, bi of businesses on healthy ecosystems, maybe also focus on the cost of inaction. And the second sub-team would focus on um, biodiversity governance and law, um, and that could include, for example, knowledge needs related to um, governance strategies, um, governance arrangements, um, looking into adaptive and um, collective decision making, looking, for example, into the articulation between um, national and European policies, etc. Of course, we realize that there's much more that can fit the topic of transformative change, including moving away from business as usual through nature conservation and restoration. So there's a close connection with team one, but also to, uh, through promoting sustainable uh, production and consumption and also working across uh, European borders. And that would closely link up with uh, thematic team three that will focus on EU's global action. And so indeed, um, while it is essential um, that Europe, um, that we protect and restore um, within our own borders, the vast majority of um, global biodiversity lies um, in the tropics and in the ocean. And that is also heavily impacted by EU policies. So the EU therefore has a responsibility to reverse the negative um, impacts of biodiversity and its trade and consumption patterns, including through um, increased investments um, to protect and restore biodiversity in partner countries. And these are exactly reflected in the two sub-teams that we have um, identified. Now, of course, uh, we do not want to constrain our international collaboration to these two topics only. We see this more broadly. And then we have two cross-cutting themes. One is focusing on uh, better knowledge to develop, deploy, and assess nature based solutions that could include basic research on the role of biodiversity in nature-based solutions, research on synergies and trade-offs, added value compared to technological solutions, um, and also being very clear that we would cover the different types of nature-based solutions ranging from um, conservation of natural ecosystems to heavily transformed and novel um, ecosystems. And then the last um, cross-cutting team would focus on um, knowledge for uh, on biodiversity changes and drivers. Um, again, we have identified two potential sub-teams. One focusing on the characterization and understanding of biodiversity um, uh, status, trends and drivers. And then another one uh, that focuses on setting up a pan-European network of harmonized monitoring schemes. Um, now, as regards the, the latter, we do realize that we have to be very clear on the added value of the partnership compared to existing schemes at national and regional level. And so the idea is not to interfere with these schemes, um, but rather to build on these schemes and to support capacity building and networking activities Focusing, for example, on uh, development and promotion of innovative tools, methods for monitoring, um, focusing on harmonization of tools, protocols and variables, database development, database analysis, and always ensuring a clear link with research, with research infrastructures, but also with citizen science and also with policy. Um, and then to end, uh, maybe just a few words also on nature-based solutions, because that will indeed be at the heart of the biodiversity partnership. Um, and here we recognize that even uh, in the international policy arena, um, there's still a lot of confusion of what nature-based solutions are and what they are not. Um, and we will use the definition put forward by the European Commission and also that strongly aligns with the definition from IUCN. And so basically referring uh, to the sustainable use and management of nature to tackle societal challenges with benefits for the economy, for society, but very important also for biodiversity.
Uh, and so we will also work in the context of the new ICN global standard for nature-based solutions that has recently been launched. Um, and as I said, um, we um, will also consider all types of nature-based solutions ranging from conservation of natural ecosystems, what we consider as nature-based solutions type one, um, all the way up to um, heavily transformed and novel ecosystems, what we consider nature-based solutions type three. Um, so I will stop here. Uh, we look very much forward to receiving comments um, on the proposed outline of our strategic research and innovation agenda. And there will also be an open consultation towards the end of the year. So many thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Hilde. Um, I, I seem to have a slight problem with my slides. I had a beautiful slide saying questions and answers, but I don't think we need it. We have two questions from the audience. One is, is more general about the cross-fertilization resulting from scientists, managers, and policymakers working together. I understand that this is actually the core of the biodiversity partnership, but as I understand, the question is um, is uh, addressed to the Commission. Maybe Stefan Leiner, you could answer this question. How does the Commission view this cooperation? This cooperation? Uh, I have to say myself from Digital Research and Innovation, we are impulsing this cooperation and uh, we are going to fund more and more cross uh, disciplines and, and trying to to not to, to focus only on the scientific community, but I would like to give you the floor, Stefan, if you are still there, to tell us the vision from DG Environment, from the Environmental Policy Unit. Thank you, Josefina. And indeed, I think it's important, that, although you are the moderator, that you also transmit the DG Research position on these uh, on these issues, uh, as I would guess, uh, some of the questions will be addressed also to, to you. Um, well, I already mentioned it. Science is absolutely essential and the cooperation between scientists and uh, between us is essential in both shaping policy, but then also making sure that we check if our policy is going, the implementation is going in the right direction and allowing us then to take the corrective measures necessary uh, so that in 10 years time we don't again uh, say that we haven't achieved our targets because uh, that's absolutely what we need to, to, to change. And uh, the question also mentioned um, citizen science, which is absolutely important here there. Um, and I'm actually quite worried, to be honest, um, working on biodiversity policy, that uh, we are losing more and more scientists, taxonomists, others that can really tell us the basic knowledge that we need uh, to do um, in order to uh, further develop our policy. We need to invest much more into building and maintaining the capacity of the scientists, of those that are able to go out there in the nature to monitor the, the population, for example, on pollinators of birds, to understand uh, what is the relationship between the state of nature and the threats that are affecting it, the critical loads of pollutants, the interaction between food security uh, and healthy ecosystems. All of these are very complex uh, areas and we need to invest in maintaining the knowledge that we have. And hence, the uh, partnership is so important for us because it's exactly addressing that cooperation and, and supporting activities in the member states that uh, allow us to pull our resources together in order to have more uh, sound signs uh, that allow us to take the good uh, policy decisions. Bring our resources together, this is, uh, this is the key word. Um, I see the other um, question addressed uh, probably to Hilde. Can individual experts contribute to the objectives of the biodiversity partnership and how? Um, well, it depends on how this question is phrased, if it is to really define the objectives of the partnership. Um, we have had indeed several consultations to define these general objectives. We have been working already nearly two years on the, sh on the shaping of this partnership with contribution from individual experts, I would say. And then, of course, when it comes to the implementation, there will be plenty of opportunities for individual experts to be part of this partnership, be it, for example, through the, the joint calls that we will launch, but also 
through the other set of, set of activities that we foresee, um, including also science policy interfacing activities. Um, and so there will be indeed plenty of opportunities um, for individual experts to, let's say, to, to be part of the community and to contribute um, to the implementation of, of the partnership of activities um, that we foresee. Thank you very much, Hilde. I have put a poll. I don't know if participants can see it already. It's about the working areas that you just uh, described on the European Partnership. Uh, participants, you can you can answer this poll now or later. It's about your opinion on which of these areas are more relevant. I would like to open at this point the panel discussion and to invite our two. Um, the first one is. Uh, Thomas Brooks, who is the chief scientist at IUCN. Hello, Thomas. Good morning, uh, uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to give some comments from the perspective of IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, into this excellent uh, Green Week session on the exciting new uh, uh, biodiversity partnership plans. Um, I have uh, four, four main comments to contribute to the discussions this morning. The first is very much to emphasize the importance of the timing of the planned establishment of the Biodiversity Partnership uh, relative to the ongoing policy context, and to urge that this is very much brought forward into the, the front and center of communications around the partnership. Um, specifically, I see I see maybe five five areas here of absolutely key um, key complementarity, key congruence. Um, the proposed timing um, of 2022 to 2028 um, aligns at the highest level to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which of course uh, run until until 2030. So very much, uh, very much aligned with the time frame of the partnership. Um, while the initial timelines of many of the biodiversity related targets in the Sustainable Development Goals um, will vest this year, um, none of them have actually been achieved, and so strong the strong momentum in the United Nations towards continuous and urgent action towards these targets aligned with the 2030 agenda. Um, more specifically, um, and as uh, has been mentioned in 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 the in the the keynote from 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 Hilda and in Stefan's introductory remarks. Of course, the 2011 to 2020 strategic plan for biodiversity and its 20 actually targets across the Convention on Biological Diversity and the other biodiversity related conventions also vests this year, of course, um, and negotiations are, as, as we know, underway to establish a post 2020 global biodiversity framework, um, hopefully to be adopted at the 15th uh, Conference of the Parties in, in Kunming, uh, notwithstanding the necessary postponement of that uh, conference due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, thirdly, as has also been mentioned, uh, the timing of the partnership uh, aligns very nicely with that of the, the IPBES rolling work program, which also runs through 2030. Um, and fourth, uh, the alignment is also excellent with IUCN's own policy process, with IUCN's uh, more than 200 uh, government and government agency members and more than a thousand NGO and indigenous peoples organization members currently debating the union's next program, uh, labeled tw Nature 2030, um, to also run over the next decade. And that will be up for adoption at the planned Marseille World Conservation Congress, again, notwithstanding the postponement of this due to the pandemic. And then finally, uh, on the subject of implications of the pandemic, the, the time frame for the biodiversity partnership, um, as uh, Stefan mentioned in his opening comments, also aligns very well with what will doubtless be essential for post-COVID recovery policy and practice. An insertion of the biodiversity partnership results into the heart of post-pandemic recovery will be absolutely essential to ensure that this proceeds in ways supportive of and, and reinforcing of, and not contradictory to, commitments to safeguard biodiversity. 
My second, um, my second set of comments uh, uh, concern the um, partnerships proposed working areas two on the private sector and three on policy, um, as well as the um, uh, uh, planned um, SRIA thematic theme number two on transformative change. And here I'd, I'd really urge that the biodiversity partnership pick up on the, the template which has been provided in the context of the Paris Agreement to support the establishment of science-based targets for biodiversity under the post-2020 uh, global biodiversity framework. The concept of science-based targets is one of, of disaggregating global outcome goals to understand the specific contributions that specific actors stand to make in specific places if they are to contribute their share of delivery to the global goal. And so the likely establishment of, of outcome level goals for biodiversity, specifically for species and ecosystems and genetic diversity, and also likely for ecosystem services and for enabling conditions. So very much a parallel to the Paris Agreement outcome level goals of 1.5 to 2 degrees climate change and on adaptation and on finance um, would very much set the scene for establishment of science based targets for biodiversity. This is uh, uh, clearly directly relevant to governments for whom science-based targets uh, based directly on their territorial footprints could then be incorporated into national biodiversity strategies and action plans um, and thence international reporting. However, crucially, it's also directly relevant for non-state actors, including sub-national governments, indigenous and local communities, and the private sector. This would comprise genuine mainstreaming of the biodiversity agenda. The methods and the data for supporting establishment of science-based targets for species levels of biodiversity are, are very nearly available now. They'll be available early in the new year. And much work is underway um, for similar method development for ecosystems and indeed uh, for genetic diversity. The Biodiversity Partnership has a great opportunity to put its shoulder behind advancing these and supporting rolling them out across Europe and the EU member states. My third uh, uh, comments uh, concern the importance of continued attention to safeguarding biodiversity within Europe and the opportunities um, for highlighting and uh, for, for synergies um, from the Biodiversity Partnership with ongoing um, peer partnerships, sister partnerships towards this, especially under the proposed uh, Working Area 1 um, and the three th um, thematic theme number one. Um, in her presentation, Hilda emphasized the, the great opportunities uh, opened by strengthening the scientific basis behind nature-based solutions. And as mentioned, IUCN has recently published a, a standard for nature-based solutions, which can really help to underpin this. IUCN clearly strongly supportive and looks forward to helping the Biodiversity Partnership to advance these ideas. Um, one area which might be particularly useful is in forging understanding around the relationships and complementarities between the concepts of nature-based solutions and those of related concepts like ecosystem services, the ecosystem approach, and nature's contributions to people. Beyond um, nature-based solutions, I should also emphasize the importance of a number of other ongoing partnerships. I'd highlight in, in particular um, the Red List Partnership, which is essential in advancing the assessment of species extinction risk, now spanning more than 120,000 species around the world for the IUCN Red List, and with comprehensive reassessments of European species are coming up very soon. Um, this is particularly important not only in providing a snapshot to help to guide action and conservation investment, uh, for example, in life uh, programs, um, but also through the provision of repeater set by repeat assessments to, to yield the red list index as an indicator of trends in extinction risk as used by the sustainable development goals, the ACHI targets, and very likely also the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. 
Another key example here is the Key Biodiversity Areas Partnership, which serves the essential role of supporting national efforts to identify those sites which contribute significantly to the global persistence of biodiversity. The comprehensive application of this work still remains to be completed in Europe beyond some well-known elements of biodiversity such as birds. This would inform site conservation across Europe through mechanisms like indigenous and community conserved areas, private protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures complementing the Natura 2000 network. Moreover, the overlay of sites identified as key biodiversity areas with the World Database on Protected Areas and OECMs is what generates multiple indicators for the Sustainable Development Goals, the ACTI targets, and very likely also the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. So biodiversity partnership engagement into and support for all of these processes would provide great benefit both to Europe specifically and to the world more generally. And that actually takes me on, I think, to my final, um, my final uh, uh, very brief comment, which is really to, um, to emphasize the importance of the biodiversity partnership plans to focus attention on to addressing impacts imported into Europe from the rest of the world through trade and through finance in the partnerships uh, planned working area four and in the three as uh, thematic area three. Great advances over, over recent years in development of methods like environmentally extended impact, input output analysis and life cycle assessment now provide the potential to quantify what and where these kind of embodied impacts are, both at the level of the EU, at the level of individual countries, and even at the level of specific non-state actors. Incorporating these methods into policy and practice has great potential to strengthen the empirical basis um, for what enabling conditions elements of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework should look like and to ensure a framework which is not only sufficient but also equitable around the world. In sum, thank you so much for these, uh, these excellent uh, presentations and IUCN uh, very much looks forward to leaning its support and participating enthusiastically in the biodiversity partnership to rescue biodiversity to safeguard life on Earth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, I would like to give the floor to our second discussant panelist uh, before going back to the audience and start a broad discussion and questions. And he's Reitner Sotke, who works uh, at the other side in the, in, in, in he can tell us about the um, experience of a, of a research funder who works for a member state. Hello, Reitner. Hey, hello everyone. Um, um, I hope you can hear me well. Um, yes, uh, I'm, I'm working uh, for a um, German um, research uh, management agency. It's part of the, um, the German uh, Aeronautics uh, Center uh, DLR. We are a funding agency um, supporting um, key stakeholders uh, um, from government to science and education in Germany. Um, but we're also coordinating funding programs, especially for the um, German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. And uh, we are part of the Biodiversa uh, um, network, uh, which uh, established uh, some 15 years ago. Um, so um, um, we're uh, um, very uh, um, uh, much engaged in, in the existing network and uh, we're looking forward, of course, to the future European partnership. Um, 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 what what we what my main remarks are um, um, to this to this uh, um, future European partnership? Um, of course, we are much interested uh, um, to um, to connect uh, um, the actual and future activities uh, with um, in the partnership to to connect um, the the future activities of the European partnership with existing or ongoing um, national activities, um, um, not only in nature conservation, but also in um, biodiversity monitoring, for example, and of course, uh, with research activities on biodiversity and um, and uh, um, nature-based solutions. Um, we're 
um, of course, uh, very much interested uh, in um, um, enhancing our uh, database on um, the existing biodiversity changes uh, to to connect uh, um, several um, uh, uh, um, disconnected uh, uh, data pools uh, on uh, uh, um, the actual biodiversity status. Um, um, but we're also interested in enhancing the knowledge on the causes and on the consequences of biodiversity loss and biodiversity changes. And we are also very much interested in um, enhancing um, the um, uh, the common solutions we can find uh, um, for biodiversity conservation from the local level to the regional, national, and even the European level, maybe also international level. Uh, we'll see what the um, possibilities of the of the future European partnerships um, will be in, in that. Um, one one important point for me uh, uh, in the in the um, future partnership will be um, how can we um, connect um, our existing activities for example in germany we launched a big um, um, research initiative uh, um, bmbf the ministry did this last year uh, a research initiative on um, by uh, for, for biodiversity conservation and we will um, uh, try to um, to, to, to bring forward um, research uh, on, on several uh, um, focus areas. We want to develop, for example, innovative technologies and methods um, to improve uh, and boost the efficiency of biodiversity monitoring, for example. Um, this will be one point to bring in, 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 the, in the future partnership. And what is interesting here, the federal government too, um, um, at the moment uh, is establishing in Germany uh, a national center, a scientific center for biodiversity monitoring. And of course, um, we're very much interested to bring in um, um, research into uh, um, and the biodiversity monitoring too, to, to develop um, new tools, new technologies, uh, scientific-based uh, um, solutions um, um, to, to come forward in biodiversity monitoring. Uh, a second point of the of the research initiative in Germany is to enhance the systemic understanding of the causes, the dynamics and consequences of biodiversity changes. This is more classical biodiversity research, I would say. And finally, we want to um, come forward uh, 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 with the um, with systemic solutions. We want to generate uh, nature-based solutions or a repertoire repertoire of measures, for example, uh, or which we want to um, um, build up in cooperation with the prospective users and stakeholders. And uh, I think um, uh, uh, exactly the question, uh, one of the uh, um, uh, coming coming from the auditory, uh, what will be the possibilities to be engaged in the partnerships for, for, for stakeholders? That will be exact the, the possibility to come in here. Okay, so um, to my point of view, um, there's a there's a huge potential for the for the upcoming uh, um, future uh, partnership here, and uh, um, and and of course uh, uh, Germany uh, will play uh, um, an important role in the partnership. I'm sure uh, um, it will. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the time being. Thank you very much, Rainer. Uh, I am seeing also a number of other questions uh, about uh, policies and partnerships supported in other countries than member states. Maybe Hilde want to comment on other the, the international dimension of this uh, partnership? If Yes, I don't know if I understand the question correctly, but um, the, the aim would be that we indeed also collaborate with other partnerships, for example, um, as I mentioned, uh, Water for All or the one on urban transitions or the one on sustainable agriculture to tackle um, different types of policies where biodiversity is more like a transversal issue. Um, and in that way, indeed, that we can um, help to de-silo uh, between different sectors and policies and that we can help to mainstream um, biodiversity. So, so 
let's say biodiversity will be at the heart of, of our partnership, but we will collaborate with other initiatives, with other partnerships, and also with international initiatives um, to, to tackle uh, biodiversity issues more, more broadly. I don't know if that is answering the question. Um, it, it does. Uh, I would like to encourage, I'm so, uh, excuse me for the works in the background. I would like to encourage the audience to write in the in the chat their their views for possible um, themes for this RIA of possible flagships. This is also a, a, in spite of this format that doesn't allow a proper brainstorming. It, it means to be also a, to ask the community. Um, is there anything from the environment side, Karin? Would you like to add something from the, because for the first time we have not only research, we have environmental ministries. What is the view from, from your side? I, maybe Xavier would like to answer. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Um, yeah, regarding the first question uh, by uh, Olga, uh, I think uh, we, we can answer by uh, saying that it's uh, fully possible uh, to support projects uh, that uh, involve, the, for instance, that tackle uh, uh, biodiversity loss, deforestation, whatever, in, uh, in tropical uh, regions. We have done this in the past in, uh, in Biodiversa. Of course, it's better to have on board um, partners from the countries, which is, for instance, huh? we have worked uh, with Brazil uh, for uh, three or four years now, uh, but uh, it's always possible to mobilize the European teams um, and to find a way to, uh, to have a partnership with uh, uh, researchers and stakeholders uh, in these uh, countries. One aspect. And regarding the stakeholder engagement, uh, there are indeed a, a range of mechanisms allowing this. And uh, you have to realize that uh, the kind of programs we will launch, uh, it will be expected uh, that there is a stakeholder engagement. For instance, in the, in the research projects uh, we will support, stakeholder engagement will be one aspect expected it will be one uh, evaluation criterion so um, and there will be resources to to then uh, engage concretely stakeholders so um, it's really part of the of the partnership okay it was uh, to uh, to answer these questions and uh, i have not heard supposed to to deliver some uh, concluding remarks on that. I'm sorry, I have to apologize for my neighbors having works next door. I would like to open the floor for anybody who wants to have a comment on the questions that are being put by the audience on um, invertebrate biodiversity, uh, marine invertebrate biodiversity, tourism, and other questions. And after that, we will move to the concluding remarks. Who wants to answer? Actually, the question would be, could this kind of, of aspects like the marine invertebrates, uh, could these be examples of possible flagships that the partnership can have? how this is going to be um, integrated in this RIA with the rest of the national and European um, research uh, initiatives. Uh, for, for this, uh, we could say that, for instance, uh, the monitoring activities are uh, planned. Um, we have ongoing discussions uh, to identify uh, where are the, the major gaps. And uh, according to the answer, uh, we could decide, for instance, that uh, uh, one major gap, gap is indeed on the uh, invertebrates. It can be terrestrial uh, and marine. Um, and then the partnership could have a key role in reinforcing the, the monitoring of uh, these uh, ill-studied uh, groups. So this is one possibility. But uh, the first thing to do, of course, is to agree on the, 
the priorities in terms of uh, gaps. Max Xavier, I think we are moving to the closing remarks. We have only four minutes to go, but before you give us a wrap up of this session, um, I would like to invite uh, the audience to join the related sessions this afternoon, the one on the EU-wide assessment of ecosystems, the baseline for the EU biodiversity strategy for 2030, and the other one on the Knowledge Center for Biodiversity that will be absolutely connected to the biodiversity partnership. And this is a very long session with a break in the middle, so you can uh, know everything you ever wanted to know about biodiversity that we're afraid to ask. Um, Xavier, Leroux uh, is the chair and coordinator of Biodiversa, and uh, he's also organizing and then developing the new partnership. So, Xavier, the floor is yours to close this session. Okay, thanks a lot, and thanks a lot to all. Huh? Uh, we had uh, nearly 200 uh, attendees here, which is uh, excellent. And I think uh, we all see that uh, we, we are here in a Im very important period. Huh? Uh, for the organization of the research policy and environmental uh, policy landscape regarding biodiversity in Europe. Um, Stefan Leiner uh, stressed uh, the, the context, uh, which is a, a context of uh, urgent need for actions, um, stressed by uh, the European biodiversity strategy for uh, 2030 and uh, the global biodiversity framework. And this is calling clearly for renewed ambition to protect, restore, and sustainably uh, manage biodiversity. Um, what we have heard today uh, is that uh, research and innovation is clearly part of the solution. Uh, the challenge ahead is uh, indeed not only a problem of uh, implementation, as we can sometimes uh, hear. Um, uh, research innovation it's, uh, is needed because uh, research, it's a process that helps to sometimes rephrase some questions uh, when it's needed. It's a process that can explore new practices, new policy options that are not always on the table initially. And it's a process that uh, avoid to take for granted the outcome of uh, appealing solutions or to, that can avoid to work on the wrong scale or the wrong level of organization, for instance. So. Um, I think it's clear that the, the partnership will make sure that the research and innovation forces uh, can be mobilized uh, in this important uh, period. So research in, is needed and it's all types of uh, research. At the same time, it's also very clear from what we have heard that the challenge ahead for biodiversity um, is uh, importantly to boost uh, science-based implementation policy and decision making. This is also uh, an expectation and this is calling for bridging the gap between research practice and, and policy. And this is why this partnership is uh, of paramount importance. It has been presented by uh, Hilde Egermont. And uh, as compared to the situation we had previously in the European research area, uh, in particular with Biodiversa, um, I see three common points and three novel points. The three common points, um, we have an approach that will allow a broad geographical coverage. Uh, in Biodiversa, we have 25 countries. Here, we will have close to 30 countries normally. Uh, second point, uh, there will be mobilization of all the research forces on biodiversity and all the, the stakeholders associated to these research forces. Uh, this is uh, this corresponds to forces tackling issues from conservation, restoration, to the valuation of biodiversity and ecosystem services, uh, to governance uh, systems and uh, nature-based solutions of all types. And this corresponds also to mobilization of all disciplines it's not only ecology, biology we are talking about, it's also earth sciences, economy, sociology, law, planning and governance sciences, etc. You understand, given what we are talking about, we need all these forces. And the third point, it's the international dimension already promoted by Biodiversa, which will be reinforced. But there are three main novel points 
uh, through this partnership. The first one, it's a reinforcement of uh, the link we, we will achieve between the research arena and the environmental policy arena. Um, when we say uh, close to 30 countries, you have to realize that in most countries, we have mobilized both ministries of research and funders of research, but also ministries of environment, EPAs, etc. And this will allow us to uh, develop actions, programs um, that will uh, uh, bridge a gap between these two arenas at the national level and at the European level. Keep in mind that this uh, partnership is supported by DG Env and DG Research. Uh, second novel point, uh, this partnership, it has been uh, highlighted, will reinforce the link between research and biodiversity monitoring. Again, too often there is a divide uh, between the two. And third point, uh, it will bridge a gap between research and businesses, private actors, etc., which is important. And um, thanks to these new uh, and salient uh, aspects, uh, the partnership will be in a position to implement more holistic and systemic programs and actions. And I think this is a key for biodiversity. Uh, we have been we have uh, felt short, I would say, um, according to the objectives we had uh, in the past for biodiversity. And this is likely due to the fact that uh, the situation was that of uh, a silos, too many silos. So to be, provoca to be provocative as compared to uh, the, the poll, uh, you have seen the poll where you, were, you have been asked what is the most relevant um, working area. For me personally, the most relevant is the integration of these different working areas, what they represent, the forces uh, at stake, and this is what will make this partnership more relevant with stronger impact, because impact is, as said by uh, Thomas Brooks, what we need here. So I will not say too much, but uh, you, you see here that uh, impact will be for scientists and the stakeholders working with them. Uh, the partnership will offer 300 uh, million to fund transnational and transdisciplinary research projects. And this will allow you, scientists and stakeholders, to do through these projects and to have impact. Uh, this partnership will also uh, allow uh, the ones involved in biodiversity monitoring, or that could be involved, uh, it will allow you to do more. Uh, Renner said, uh, new tools, new methods uh, to do this, and overall reinforce schemes at the regional and national level. It can reinforce uh, new taxa, functional groups uh, monitored. And yeah, I, we have to close the session, unfortunately. I, I your your words on bridging the gap between research policy and practice in a holistic and systemic uh, way thank you very much to everybody please uh, join us to the conversation uh, go to buy the versa website and contribute to this uh, building of the strategic research and innovation agenda and thanks to all our panelists for the good discussion today <laughs>